welcome to 27 lecture of video course on travelogy. Today's topic is application of travelogy or we can say this is the second part of the course. We have understood, we have learned various fundamentals related to friction, wear, lubrication, some basic theories required to design any type of pyramid. So, it is not time to apply those theories, those fundamentals for real applications and that is why this model name as it is the applications of travelogy and present lecture name is also application of travelogy. In this model we will be having around 8 to 10 lectures exploring various applications and how to utilize fundamental or fundamentals which we have learned in earlier lectures. We say that most common elements, most common components which are used in number of machines, machines which have relative motion, any rotary motion, any sliding motion. Take an example of car, which is the automobile, aircraft, turbines, iron compressor, all these required tribal elements they required some sort of sliding motion, some sort of rotational motion and that is why we require application of travelogies to design those components which are utilized for relative motion under load. Common elements are the bearings, gears, cams, brakes and seats. What we say bearing means to bear the load. This element need to bear the load and provide some sort of isolation. Isolation between rotating part and stationary part, isolation between sliding part and stationary part. So, they are mean to support the load and provide isolation. Take an example of gears. Gears are also supposed to bear the load. Cams are also supposed to bear the load. Bricks, yeah, they are supposed to bear the load. Seals also, they have some sort of sliding, some sort of relative motion. So, in fact, all these components can be categorized as the bearings. Then question comes why we are writing five different categories. Bearing in separate category, gears are separate category, cams in separate category, brakes and seal in separate category. What is the logic? What is the reason behind that? We say this category, this kind of classification is from functional point of view, not from fundamental point of view. It is more like a you know, functional point of view. In case of gears, our main aim is to transmit the torque or transmit the motion. Particularly, they have been used as a amplification factors to enhance the torque, to carry much more load. So, they are supposed to increase the torque from 1 unit to the 40 unit. And if we require much larger than that, then we can use a multi stage gears. Coming to the cams, their functionality is basically to convert rotary motion and reciprocating motion. If the function is different, then gears, the function is different than the bearings. Even though fundamental knowledge which is required to design this kind of cams may be same. Coming to the bricks, these components are required to stop the motion. They do not allow motion or they are supposed to restrict the motion. Sometimes we use a category clutches and bricks. By all as they are saying, all in the clutches, we want motion to be transmitted. In bricks, we need to stop the motion fundamentals are same. 
the design procedure remains same. So, we will be discussing the bricks and maybe to some extent we can uh, describe about the clutches. Next category is the seals, the functionality again changes. We want to stop the leakage of liquid or gases. Many times there are harmful gases and we cannot allow to release those gases in the environment. So, we require seals, they are very harmful liquids which cannot be allowed to leak. So, we require seals. Many times the liquid or the lubricant which we use the contaminant environment as well as product. Take an example of textile. If we use a lubricant and textile threads get contaminated with liquid lubricant, that fabric will not be useful. So, we want to restrict that we want to restrict the leakage of lubricant. So, function is stop or minimize the leakage that is why we require product C. Stop the motion we require brakes. Transmit the motion from rotary to the trans, uh, reciprocating motion or oscillatory motion and we require cams. Transmit the motion with high torque, enhanced torque we require gears support the load we require bearings and of course, as I mentioned here that there is a possibility of rolling and sliding in almost every component there are some sliding some rolling. We know very well rolling causes a laser friction and causes a laser wear compared to the sliding that is why as far as possible we should move to the rolling or we should opt for the rolling action. But if it is not permitted or functionality is not allowing it then we can think about the sliding. And whenever uh, this kind of classification comes and we think about the bearings what comes in the mind oh some rolling element bearing which is the most popular most commonly used readily available in the market. That is why I say when I talk about bearing or when I think about the bearing a bearing appears in a mind bearing has a some sort of race or ring with an inner ring. Some rolling elements, why we are saying the rolling element because they have their own axis of the rotation and there is a some sort of outer ring. If inner ring rotates there is a possibility the outer ring remain stationary. So, they are providing some sort of isolation rotary motion from this point is not getting transmitted to the outer portion which is required in many times in number of mechanisms. Ah, so we need to think about this kind of uh, bearing design of this kind of bearing or selection of this kind of bearing. When you think about the sliding motion this kind of bearing appears or it can be imagined other kind of bearings also. What we are able to see there is a some sort of conformation there is a again sort of a ring, but in a pieces and this kind of uh, pads what we call is a thrust pad maybe the radial pads and they show different performance if we are able to develop some sort of convergence they will be able to develop the pressure and if there is a development of pressure this component can sustain the load at some relative motion. We have seen the two kind of bearings. So, we can think about the classification of the bearings. We say the bearing classification based on relative motion. Bearing can be classified as a rolling contact bearings or sliding contact bearings. I am using the word sliding contact bearings. One question comes. Oh, if there is a sliding and there is a contact there will be too much friction. So, we should say only sliding bearing we should not say sliding contact bearing because always our aim is to separate two surfaces or we say that our aim is always a sliding non contact bearing. So, that is why many times we use the word sliding bearing without thinking about contact and non contact and we try to design a non contact and we know very well that initial level there will be some contact when we are in start we can think about separation one way or another way whether it is a magnetic gravitation 
whether hydrostatic levitation or some other levitation. Where these points will be discussed when we detail uh, about this kind of bearings. But this is an introductory lecture with a classification of the elements are coming. We are not going to discuss much about that. But our two, the two diagrams I or two pictures which I showed in previous uh, slide, I am just repeating over here. So, there is a rolling contact bearing and this is a rolling contact bearing because there is a rolling element, they have their own axis as well as they rotate about the axis of shaft they have their own axis as well as axis of the shaft and their roll. When there is a roll, there is a continuous point change in the point of contact. That is why the wear is much lesser compared to sliding contact and most of the energy is being consumed in the rolling motion which is advisable particularly for tribal pairs. Coming up to uh, this one, this is, a, this is a sliding contact wherever uh, other thrust bearing uh, part, this is the, these are the parts and other component comes will be in a contact with this kind of parts or with this kind of parts and the fluid flume is uh, developed then they will be non-contact. So, we can say this is a classification based on relative motion, in this case relative motion is rotational motion while well, in this case relative motion is a sliding motion. We can think about um, as the arrangement is shown here. We can think about uh, classification of the bearing based on the direction of the load. This is called a radial bearing. Applied load is generally in radial direction, perpendicular to the axis. If I assume there is an axis passing at the center of uh, this uh, inner ring, then the load which is perpendicular to that, that is going to develop the radial stresses, and that is why we call as a radial bearing and many times a journal bearing as a radial motion. Well, in this case this can be called as a thrust bearing because a load will be along the axis of rotation. So, it can be called a thrust bearing. However, if this is configured, this configuration has been used, then we will call this also the radial bearing because the load applied load. In this case it can be perpendicular to the axis. So, if the load is perpendicular to this face, then it will be called a thrust bearing load perpendicular to this face, it will be called as radial bearing and there is a possibility of combination. There is a thrust bearing, a thrust load as well as a radial load, the biaxial load. So, the ax, along the axis as well as perpendicular to axis, there is a load. There is a possibility. So, we use some side of the bearing as a, this bearing also can be used for the sustaining both radial load as well as thrust load but some kind of a special classification is called a taper roller bearing that is shown over here. If we remove this top cover outer ring, what we are able to see there is a some sort of taper roller, some sort of inclination and we know that if there is inclination there will be two components of the loads, one will be along the axis other will be a perpendicular to the axis. That means it this kind of configuration or this kind of uh, bearing assembly or this kind of uh, assembly is able to sustain a radial load as well as axial load and it can be called a conical bearing, can be called taper roller bearing and it is uh, very useful. Most of the precision machines they use taper roller bearing, the manufacturing is sophisticated slightly costlier compared to the cylindrical bearing compared to the wall bearings kind of perfection in the cone is important. We will be discussing when we discuss about the rolling element bearing. There is another possibility of a bearing classification that is based on uh, lubrication mechanisms. We have understood what is a dry lubrication, what is a bondage lubrication, what is elastro hydrodynamic lubrication hydrostatic lubrication, aerostatic lubrication, hydrodynamic lubrication, aerostatic lubrication, squeeze flume lubrication. Of course, we are not discussed about the magnetic lubrication, but that can also come as a part of the lubrication mechanism. Because we say that lubrication uh, is a lubricant is a substance to reduce the friction and wear. 
So, in magnetic case, there will be separation between the two components, two surfaces, they will not be anywhere. So, bearing based on the magnetic principles, it can also be classified in this category. We can say the dry bearings, no lubricant or only solid lubricant, boundary lubricated, some sort of additives which have a stickiness, either physical attachment or chemical attachment. Elastohydronomy lubrication with the surfaces are going to deform and with that kind of deformation their load carrying capacity is going to increase and as a best configuration in tribo fields. Hydrostatic where we have to supply lubricant at higher pressure from external sources coming to aerostatic instead of liquid we are going to supply some sort of gases especially used for high speed applications. What we are talking about the more like a 50,000 rpm we are talking about uh, sliding speed of the like 50 meter per second that is very high side. Coming to hydrodynamic lubrication we are not going to supply from outside, but geometry is used in a such a manner which can generate high pressure by containing liquid appropriately. Instead of liquid if we come to the gases or we start using the gases then it will be called aerodynamic bearing. Principles remain same except the we use in this case the compressibility of gases. We know the liquid cannot be compressed beyond certain limit. The compressibility is very very limited while in gases the compressibility is not limited to that extent. That kind of compressibility can be utilized. Whenever we require a clean bearings, no pollution, no contamination, you can think about aerodynamic bearing. Only the problem is a control system, kind of surface softness which we require for aerodynamic bearing. So, if our cost permit, if our pocket permits, we should go ahead with aerodynamic bearing. If your pocket does not permit, we can think about other cheap sources. Coming to squeeze flame bearing, most commonly it comes because of the load application, because of the speed application, where there is a variable speed and variable load, and a squeezing action will happen. So, this can be assumed as a byproduct. Main action will be done by some other mechanism, and this can be so this will be supporting, it will be add on information or additional uh, load carrying capacity because of the squeeze flow action. Magnetic bearing now this is a growing field, wherever more reliability is required we think about the magnetic bearing. No pollution, no contamination, no maintenance we think about mag bearing. So, that is a growing fleet for timing the cost of the manufacturing is very very high. So, cost really does not permit, pocket does not permit this kind of bearing and many uh, simple applications we use these conventional bearings or most extensively used bearing or where the technology is fully developed they can be produced at mass level and as a production cost is much cheaper. However, every bearing has its own uh, advantage and disadvantages. Just to illustrate on this kind of mechanism, I uh, use a six sketches. You see, there is a stationary surface, there is an oscillating surface. If this is the situation, if the oscillation is when we say 15 degree, 20 degree, 30 degree, there is no complete rotation, it is only oscillation. This moving surface is going to move this way, that way. Even in that case, we can use elastomer as a bearing or elastomer as a lubricant because we know very well elastomer can be stretched up to 50 percent, the poison ratio is around 0.5. So, elastomer can be used as a bearing material and it can be treated as a dry bearing, there is no liquid lubricant, there is no gaseous lubricant, it is only the solid and a stretchability of elastomer is utilized fully extent. 
talking about the second one as a bond is lubricated, we are able to show that there is a some sort of polar ends attached to stationary surface, polar end attached to the moving surface and there will be some sort of repulsion in their tails and because of the repulsion they will not be intermingled and there is no intermingling and these are the soft easily bendable, there will be lesser friction and boundary lubricated bearings can be utilized. And in fact, even when we talk about the hydrodynamic bearing, we mix some sort of boundary additives, so that initial situations can be sustained easily. This is sketched through some sort of uh, lamellar solid lubricants, this is more like a molybdenum disulfide, graphite with a layer by layer structure can be separated out or stressed the way elastomers here. You can say that they have a weak bond and there is a layer structure. So, one layer can be stretched about 20 percent, next layer on top of the 20 percent, next layer on top of the 20 percent, 20 percent, 20 percent. So, keep on adding and we are able to develop a lot of deformation without separation of layers itself. It is more like a modified from elastomers and this layer keep stretching and uh, helping each other, joining hands with a stretch arm and able to reduce friction and wear. However, uh, depends on the application kind of uh, uh, what we say the rate of uh, speed variation, rate of stretching or temperature, moisture, many other parameters, they can show different performance. So, again now, this generally are not used as a main criteria as a lubrication mechanisms, but can be added with elastoatom lubrication, can be added with the hydrodynamic lubrication will be useful. This uh, shows a some sort of rolling elements, what we say there is a stationary surface, there is a moving surface and this is the low direction, surface is moving, in fact it is sliding, there is no rotation. But because of this sliding, this slide motion is getting rotational motion over here if these balls are stationary, not stationary as a fix or a hinge or some places and they are able to roll about their own axis. It is more like conveyor belt, we, this, these uh, rollers are rotating about their own axis. So, there is a rotational motion, easy rotational motion is not getting transmitted to the stationary surface. So, isolation is been done by rotational motion of these rolling elements. Uh, this is the main function, the rolling about their axis, that is why these, in, uh, these kind of uh, bearings are known as the rolling element bearings. An interesting thing is that this is a most commonly used bearings, and there are more than 20,000 type of rolling element bearings, weighing from few milligrams. 2 tons. This uh, fifth sketch in this case is we are saying that pressurizing of the liquid either by hydrodynamic action, aerodynamic action or by outside agencies from compressors, from pumps. So, there is a pressurization of the fluid and that pressure is able to keep two surfaces separate able to generate some sort of isolation between moving surface and stationary surfaces. And this is the last one, we saw that we have talked about the magnetic uh, uh, separation, well there is a possibility of electric separation also, we can generate the uh, field in a such a manner there is a repulsion motion between two surfaces or we say magnetic repulsion between two surfaces or if we have a good control system, we can make this kind of configuration with attraction mode also. So, overall configuration can be used that way. Generally, the group of elastohydrodynamic, hydrostatic, hydrodynamic, aerostatic, aerodynamic and a squeeze flume bearings, where so there is a clear cut liquid film between two surfaces. This gamut 
of bearings or this group of bearings can be termed as fluid flume lubricated bearings and they have very common mechanism, common equation which we have done in our previous module developing Reynolds equation using elastic equation, using thermal equations, a combination of those equations are going to be helpful, are able to give us design guidelines for this kind of bearings. We will be exploring this in detail. As a start the application of uh, uh, tribology uh, or what are the various applications. So, the bearings which we have discussed in our previous uh, 3 4 slides, number is the gears or the second number. We say that gears are more like uh, wheels having teeth, and the tooth wheel, and the teeth are required for the positive motion. We can use the uh, two simple discs in friction contact what will be the advantage if there is a one disc rotation or rotation of one disc that rotation can be transmitted to the other and based on their diameter ratio we can decrease the speed assuming the same energy has been transmitted if you decrease in a speed naturally torque will increase but we know from the frictional point of view and conformity point of view that this kind of friction disc they will not be in a contact there will be more slippage lesser rolling action and that can generate more heat more problems that is why you say teeth are required for positive engagement so that there is a continuous motion it should not happen that one is rotating at 3000 rpm other sometimes rotate the 200 rpm, sometimes 400 rpm, sometimes 600 rpm, 800 rpm or continuous variation. Then what, will, what is the loss? We are not going to get any definite motion and whole functionality will be 0, useless component. So, that is why this kind of positive drive is important, but this positive drive comes because of the tooth profile also. You can see there is a variation in the dimension starting from the some root dimension is reaching to the maximum dimension and if the rotation is given with the variable dimensions naturally speed ratio will change that is why we need a definite profile, definite profile of the tooth and that tooth profile is often known as involved profile. It is possible to use involved profile for the constant speed ratio speed is not going to change obviously the speed ratio is not going to change you can see the kind of the profile it has a some sort of convex shape some sort of the flitting and this convex shape when come in a contact with the other tooth pair is going to generate very high pressure high elastic deformation when we are talking about high that means it is still in a micron level but need to be counted. Elastic deformation will have a effect on the load carrying capacity and the kind of lubricant we use there will be some sort of thickening of those lubricants. Now, based on the different kind of a configurations gears are classified. You can see there is a spur gear a straight teeth. Whatever the motion transmitted from a one what is a smaller gear would known as a pinion to the gear, the axis are parallel, there is a parallel transmission. However, there is a possibility of some sort of a 90 degree band, 60 degree band or a angle of uh, inclination may be changing from 30, 45, 60 degree, then we need to change the profile. We use a bevel gears well. So, this is the bevel gears with some sort of helical shape also. You see often we use a helical gears for the smooth motion, what we know as a 
contact ratio. Effective contact ratio and helical profile is more than 2. What is the meaning of that? So, when you see the aspergillus, there is a contact between the one tooth pair. Before the second tooth pair comes in a contact, naturally there need to be a disengagement of first tooth pair. If there is no disengagement, then there will not be motion. And this kind of a variation changes the stiffness of the gear pair and that induces some sort of additional vibration. To avoid that, that kind of impact loading, that kind of vibration, we use helical profile. So, there is a smooth engagement, smooth disengagement, contact ratio is high. What is the contact ratio? It seems when saying that 2 uh, contact ratio more than 2, in fact, 2 pair of teeth are in contact. Sometimes we require a high torque ratio, so we use uh, we use a warm gear. The torque ratio can be even uh, up to forty to one. So it depends on uh, kind of the profile which we use, kind of the application which we use. We can classify these gears as a spur gear, helical gear, bevel gear, warm gear. Of hurricane gear when there is a pairing of the helical gears. But whatever the gear, their failure phenomena by and large remain same. To some extent, it is a fracture of a tooth and greater extent is a surface fatigue. Mostly happens because of the variable rolling to sliding ratio. Even though ideally we say this, it need to be rolling motion. But lack of the lubricant, change in profile, change in the clearance, some sort of misalignment, introduce more and more sliding. It has been observed. Sliding to the rolling ratio many times happen to be nine percent. They should show good performance good efficiency, maybe say 98 percent efficiency, then the sliding should be lesser than 2 percent, but with the change in condition, change in clearance, change in uh, environment, they change the different performance, they change the performance. As I mentioned, whatever the helical profile or uh, bubble uh, profile or uh, axis of rotation is different or angle of uh, rotation or angle of uh, load is different, failure may happen like this is a fracture or the root surface or maybe a some sort of a pitting, flank pitting, what we name as a surface fatigue which we have studied as a surface fatigue. So, there is a possibility and again there is a symmetry and there is a same knowledge can be utilized for the different gear pairs. We will be exploring these options, we have already learned some sort of cracking, we have already learned something about the surface fatigue, we will be utilizing that kind of knowledge to predict the life of the gear pair, to design the gear pair. The third category comes with the cams, it's some sort of uh, strange shape. This is a perfect uh, one, slightly damaged, much more damaged. So, this kind of profile is a cam profile. You can see it is uh, generally on the shafts and shaft generally means the rotation. Because of this profile, this rotational motion will be changed to the reciprocating motion. It's something like this, the cam has a rotational motion, follower which is coming in a contact will be subjected to some time very high speed rotation or uh, pushing more harder pushing, sometimes laser pushing and if this is a surface which comes in a contact, naturally no motion will be transmitted, but when this kind of portion comes, there will be continuous increase or displacement of the, this cam downward. When this motion comes, there will be retraction or the closure of the wall back, right. So, kind of the cam profile which we use, it will be transmitting the different kind of motions. If we use a centric cam, then it will be much different uh, kind of motion which is getting transmitted. If we use uh, this kind of a conical shape cam, then the motion will be different. 
Of course, it depends on the functionality, depends on the requirement, we choose a CAM profile. But with a different CAM profile, we need to keep in our mind what should the what is the pressure angle. As far as my knowledge is concerned, obviously, as far as our designer's knowledge is concerned, we should transmit maximum force to the desired direction. If laser force is getting transmitted to desired direction, then that is a failure that is going to cause more and more system failure. Now, what is the common in the rolling element bearing gears and cam follower mechanism? That is a large load and moderate speed. Of course, uh, it is a subjective term. Moderate speed can be a variable we talk about the nano level, we talk about the micro level, we talk about the macro level. These remain always a subjective. I can say 1 meter per second is a moderate uh, speed, I can say 10 meter per second is a moderate speed, 100 meter per second is a moderate speed. So, these are the terms so we generally uh, use loosely. This is nothing like a, a farm guide, I know it has to be more than. Uh, 1 meter per second or lesser than 5 meter per second is something like that. It depends on the scale on which we are working, but larger load. If we talk about the larger load, we should to talk about the contact pressure. The contact pressure in this kind of the bearings or in this kind of the tribal surfaces are the rolling element bearing gears or the cam follower. It is used even in giga Pascal. That is why we say they have a high pressure and this pressure is been exerted by the fluid. At the such a high pressure, the fluid will get solidified, the viscosity will increase tremendously and that is a common in all elements, a rolling element, gears and cam follower mechanism. This kind of mechanism or this kind of a high contact pressure, high fluid flow pressure is common and that is a lifeline for this kind of components. That is the main strength of these components and we analyze this high contact pressure, high fluid flow pressure using elastro hydrodynamic lubrication or more appropriately I can say hard elastro hydrodynamic lubrication surfaces are not soft, these surfaces are generally very hard. We are talking about the hardness of 60 HRC, they are not very soft surfaces. Hard surface and require a lot of pressure to deflect the surfaces. Interesting thing is a minimum film thickness, functionality with the load and functionality with the velocity what we are talking about the relative velocity. You can see the functionality of the load. As the load increases, firm thickness will decrease that is known. But kind of the exponent which comes over here is a negligible. What we are trying to convey, you keep on increasing load beyond certain limit, firm thickness is not going to change. That is strange. And talking about the velocity, velocity sensitivity is very high. This factor is around 0 0.68, 0 0.7. It is increase in the velocity is going to increase the flum thickness. Decrease in the velocity is going to decrease in the flum thickness. Right? This is the reason that they need to be designed properly with proper justification of the speed. We know the load is not going to be changing or load is not that sensitive or effect of the load is negligible on the firm thickness, effect of the velocity is very high. If I compare with hydronomy lubrication, we are able to see in hydronomy lubrication generally firm thickness is uh, uh, power in this case uh, particularly for uh, velocity is 0 0.5, while here the power is, has increased from 0 0.5 to 0 0.68. Of course, this is again not 100 percent correct. A few uh, other geometry changes, this will as ratio also will change, but always a greater than 0 0.5. While in case of the load, in hydronomic lubrication, as the load increases, 
Bohm thickness decreases and that effect is almost 1 unit, power is 1, while in this case power is much lower. Insensitive, increase in the load carrying, uh, increase in the applied load is not going to change from thickness. It can be justified with uh, some sort of diagram. You say that this, this diagram was shown in our uh, previous lecture. So, you assume this is a pressure axis this is axial direction or tangential direction. Now, if I increase the load, what is going to happen? There is a more deformation, whatever the here the pressure was reaching earlier to max value. If you increase the further load, the flattening of the disc curve occurs. Maximum pressure by and large is remaining same, but there is a more and more area coming in this curve. The load carrying capacity is increasing by the flattening, maintaining same high pressure. And when we talk about the flint thickness point of view, you say, let us say there is a one is straight profile, a straight line profile, another one is spherical profile or a cylindrical profile. Initial shape or initial flint thickness is this much, let me say h min. Now, what will happen if I apply more load? If I apply more load, then this if there is a flattening of the surface, a deflection is happening, and flow thickness is still the same, it is going to sustain much more load, but flow thickness is not going to change. That is the beauty of elastohydronic lubrication mechanism. That is uh, what we say that these elements are optimally designed they show all performance which are desired. Of course, if there is a mistaken calculation, then they show the worst behavior. These are the optimized surfaces, optimized components, anywhere wrong, they are going, we are going to pay a huge amount for that. So, bearings are over, gears are over or introduction of bearings, introduction of gear, gear introduction of camera server when we are talking about the brakes. When we think about the brake is typical this application of yes, there is uh, one disc here or which is the one pad, one pad here or one wheel, one wheel here and there will be disc or if this is a wheel there is a uh, some sort of a pad which is coming in a contact to stop it, we call a disc pad bearing pad area can be anything, maybe lesser, larger depending on the what is required. There are other kind of bearings also, these are the block bearings, or the disc bearing, block bearing, we say internal expanding shoes, external contracting shoes, what is the purpose? To stop this rotating ring, in this case pressure is applied, so the come in a contact, apply more friction. If there is a more friction, there will be resistance and this uh, thing will stop. Same thing in this case, external contraction of the shoe come in a contact, stop this rotating ring, block it, block its motion. That is why we can say uh, these bearings are going to be very sensitive, uh, this kind of bricks can be very sensitive. We are going to generate very high friction you can see that there is a no friction initially, when uh, there is no contact there is an almost negligible friction except the air friction, air drag, but when this, this kind of surface come in a contact the coefficient of friction is going to vary very very high, let us say 0 0.3 to 0 0.45, coefficient of friction is going to be high that is why in the heat there will be heat generation and if there is a heat generation the material property will change. Now, that depends sensitivity of the material towards creep behavior. The brakes are applied continuously, there will be possibility of a significant change in property. The brakes are applied only for a fraction of second, then there is a possibility of no change in material properties. So, we require a thorough understanding, we require a thorough study of this kind of systems. There is another kind of the brake, what we call the band brake. Of course, every brake system has its own utility, own application. So, it depends on the requirement we can design the brakes, we require performance. Now, performance can be in terms of uh, 
stopping distance, how fast we want to reduce the energy of rotating element to the 0. It can be comfort also, there should not be any jack motion. It can be related to the pollution, there should not be much pollution or there should be 0 pollution. Because we know we are going to increase the coefficient of friction and that increase in the friction there is a possibility of a very high rubbing with heat and that rubbing is going to generate a more and more wear particles change in dimension and this wear particle if they get mixed in the environment is going to cause a pollution which should be avoided. And sometimes we say that there is a more wear then there is a life production in that. We want a desirable life, no pollution maximum comfort and high performance. We want to stop the wheel, it should get a stop in no time, that kind of performance. The last element in this case is the seal. What is seal? We say generally if I assume there are two regions, region 1 and region 2, this is the sealing element attached to the one surface and there is a possibility of small gap to the other surface. Of course, if there is a gap we will call this as a non-contacting seam, otherwise there will be a contact that will be contacting seam. In our case, we will be discussing more about the contacting seam, which is also known as a mechanical seam, there is a mechanical contact between two surfaces. So, we will be discussing more about the contact seam. Of course, there are a number of uh, non contacting seals are also available based on the fluid film, based on the turbulence, based on the restriction, based uh, by generating of some feature on the uh, on the seal surface. But we will be concentrating more on a contact seal, we will be describing more on contact seals. Now, so this is a general uh, and uh, we will say introductory part of the different applications which we are going to discuss. And first element which we are going to discuss is the rolling element bearing. As I mentioned, there are more than 20,000 rolling element bearing available in the market. We can see there is a, there are a number of elements in the rolling element bearing, and this diagram is generally shown as a cages, retainers, undesirable from a travelogy point of view because these retainers are going to introduce some sort of sliding between the rolling motion obviously between the rolling elements. So, it is undesirable, but problem is that if we do not use this kind of retainer there is a more friction all rolling element will be in a contact and they will not be able to rotate easily there will be more sliding. So, there should be a some sort of justification we require retainers we do not require retainers. So, some sort of uh, material selection is important in this case. And uh, this is a one um, famous thing is that rotation is always easier than linear motion. That is why we require rolling element bearings and these are available extensively in a market and a much cheaper cost. That is why we say if you can buy it do not make it. An interesting thing is that if I start making a rolling element bearing in house or give to some vendor some designer ask him to make rolling element bearing for us, cost of that fabrication will be almost 10 times compared to the market cost or the cost at which a bearing is available in the market. This is the reason why we say that we generally go ahead with the selection of rolling element bearing. Generally, we do not design rolling element bearing. We pick up from the market because these kind of bearings are available on the market in abundant, readily available and almost every nook and corner we can find out the rolling element bearings. But the applications are extensive, you are not found much uh, machines which do not use a rolling element bearing it is very, 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 very common element. So, we will uh, be describing about that, but when we say 
we are going to select it. The question comes, do I really require some fundamentals for the selection? Truly no. A catalog, some sort of a thumb rules are sufficient. The problem comes, if these rolling elements are going to fail and we do not have any clue why those bearing fail. The bearing cost is cheaper and we are able to immediately replace the bearing with other bearing then there is no problem, but the bearings cost is very high or their failure is going to cost the system or uh, plant very high cost. Then we require a good thorough analysis, we require a thorough understanding. Even though we are going to pick up from the market, we require a good knowledge for selection as well as application on how to arrange it in proper order. We will not be thinking about some hypothetical situations, I will say okay, any bearing can be utilized. If we have knowledge, we will be having better knowledge about, I will say that we have basic knowledge, we will be having better understanding of the bearing selection. We will be discussing this in our next lecture, so our next lecture will be on the rolling element bearings. Thank you.